Welcome to Azure RP11, a powerful desktop tool for prototyping web and app interfaces. We'll explore everything from launching the app to understanding each button, pane, and panel. So let's figure it out. Azure is a prototyping and documentation desktop used by UX slash UI designers, PMs, developers, and marketers. It lets you visually design interfaces, add interactions, and share clickable prototypes all without code. So when you launch the app, you can either open existing or create a new blank file. Both appear clearly on the welcome screen. New file flips you back into a blank canvas ready for layout work. So let's go ahead and tap on new blank file. And there we go. We are immediately put into this blank state or this blank canvas, which we can edit. So at the very top, you will see these buttons. Now these are important, but they're pretty common. So for file, this is pretty simple. The buttons under this are basically new, open, save, prototyping, export, edit. This is where you can undo, redo, copy, paste, preference, and more view you can toggle the toolbars like this like if you do not want to see pages in outline you can toggle that off the grids the rulers the panes and for project arrange publish team account and help all of these these six tabs basically these are for managing multi-file projects aligning widgets publishing prototypes collaboration account settings and support so below menus, you'll find the main toolbar with tools for selecting, arranging, aligning, copying, and more. And next to it is the style toolbar, which you will set widget or page styles like fonts, colors, borders, and more. These toolbars are customizable via view and then going into toolbars. So on the left side, you've got your pages. This is where you can manage the pages because you can have more than one by simply tapping on this there we go, we've got our page two, page three, and as many as you want. Next is outline. This shows all elements and widgets hierarchically, but we don't have any outlines right now, so I won't be able to show you that. So next is the libraries. Basically, this is where you can drag widgets from pre-installed libraries. So let's actually give that a try. I'm gonna drag a box. There you go, we just dragged a box out of our library. Now, if you want to drag an image, you can do that as well. You can insert an image into this if you would like to. And a button, you know, you can click on this button. Of course, it has a function. You can add way more because there are so many columns into this. Like if you want a table, menus, or whatever else, just simply drag it into this. You could even have a checkbox if you'd like to. You can check that out. And yeah, for the components panel, basically, this is where you can get reusable components that you make once and update everywhere. If I tap on this, as you can see, we have a new component. But let's go back to our page three. On the right side, there are three key tabs. You've got interactions, which adds, clicks, hovers, load triggers, and actions like open link or show panel. You can tap a new interaction in order to, you know, have a new interaction. I'm going to tap page key down and now we're going to have another one and basically it's a whole process next up is the notes of course these are notes for yourself you can add developer or stakeholder notes like documentation and more for style these are detailed styling options like fill border text and shadow you can change the dimensions of the page the style of the page if you want it to align and if you want to fill it up with a single color there you go i'm gonna make it deeper or maybe a black one and yeah you can change the visual fidelity to normal or low and basically this is just the style or the whole look of the whole thing and now the canvas is the central design area where you drag in widgets shapes text images and lay out them visually drawing tools and pen tool live in insert menu or toolbar to sketch custom shapes. So now let's tackle all these buttons. The first one is the select tool. If you tap on that, you can select whatever element you want and basically drag it all around. Next up is this element tool, which you can use to create random elements, however big, however small you would like it to be. Now I'm going to tap on it again. 
there you go it created another and we can even change the element that we want to create so if you want to create an oval we can do so or maybe a star or these other shapes it's pretty much very simple just like doing it in your microsoft word so let's say i'm gonna make a rectangle there you go and yeah that is our rectangle that is how you can create shapes up next is the text pretty self-explanatory just type whatever you want after you know adding the text in and then you have this which is a text field you can have a text field over there and now you've got your dynamic panels what this does is basically you can choose from dynamic panel repeater inline hotspot and snapshot this one is a pencil if you want to you know draw like so it's gonna look like that and basically if you draw in these dimensions it's actually gonna turn out pretty good so there you go this one is when you can draw lines between two things like so there we go i'm gonna draw more lines and yeah basically all of these elements are up to you they're all up to you like how you use them what they use them for and how you want to use them and lastly we've got this widget tool where we can search for widgets and basically do whatever we want with those widgets so yeah those are all of the tools that we can use and basically on the top right corner you've got two buttons first up is the play button which starts the prototype preview when you do this or when you tap on this it's going to show you the preview and it's going to play that preview of your design and next up is the share button if you tap on this you can share it to someone and basically it's a shareable link via Azure Cloud so others can view slash edit collaboratively. Using the Arrange menu, you align, group, or reorder widgets. Publish creates interactive prototypes or publishes to Azure Cloud. Team menu handles team projects and collaboration while account and help manage sign-in and support. So, what is Azure? Well, RP11 is ideal for designers, UX professionals, product managers, and anyone wanting high fidelity, interactive prototypes with documentation and collaboration baked in. You can build flows, add logic, and share your work with ease. Basically, it's a desktop application built specifically for designing and prototyping interactive user interfaces. Think of it as your digital whiteboard, canvas, and simulation tab, all rolled into one. It's not just for static screen mockups, it lets you simulate actual user interactions so buttons can be clicked menus can open forms can validate and screens can change in response to that user behavior so who is this app for it's ideal for ux ui designers who want to prototype layouts flows and screen behaviors product managers who need to show stakeholders what an app or website will actually feel like developers who need to clear specs and logic flows before they start building, startups and teams who want to test ideas quickly before spending money on development, and basically it's especially powerful in corporate environments where you might need to hand off a detailed and interactive prototype to a development team with full documentation attached. Azure helps avoid the guesswork stage of translating a design into code. So why would you use Azure over other tools? Why not just Figma or Adobe? Well, Azure goes far beyond design. You can add logic like, if this value is greater than 5, then show this panel. You can simulate dynamic content, conditional navigation, multi-step forms, and more. You can even create reusable components called masters or components to use across pages. Plus, they have a built-in flowchart, notes, and interaction mapping, so you can document everything clearly. And the best part, you don't need to code. All of these interactions are built with a simple visual system, almost like setting up an if this, then that rules, which makes it beginner friendly once you get used to the layout. So that's about it for this video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and let us know in the comments down below if the tutorial works or if you have any questions. Thank you and goodbye.